Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to cover how you can write enable any Power BI data model. So here we see a report based on Microsoft Dynamics, but this could be really any other data source that Power BI supports. This could be complex ERP systems like uh, SAP, but also any of the 600 other connectors that um, Power BI supports. So we have a Power BI report here, and we want to now add planning enablement, write-back enablement to it. And this is very easy with the Actaris Power BI Sync tool. Power BI Sync you can download from the Actaris website. Just go to uh, Power BI Sync and you will find the trial button here. So you can download and install this app um, in one minute. And once uh, you have run the setup, you will get this menu where you configure what's your Power BI data set what's your target server where you want to store the write-back tables. Actaris automatically gives you a Azure SQL database, but you can also use your own Microsoft SQL Server on-premise or your own Azure SQL Server database here. Uh, in this case, uh, we want to do this with the Power BI file. Um, it will automatically read the data from the existing Power BI file. You can see now all the tables here. So these are the uh, tables that are in these files, in this case the uh, dynamics uh, tables. I can also make this a bit larger. This is a metro application that also expands um, mm -hmm. with the data. So we see here now, for example, the chart of accounts and with one click we can export it to SQL Server and with another click we can turn it into an Actaris dimension. As an Actaris dimension you can access this um, SQL Server dimension in the Actaris software as a service application that's called the Actaris modeler. So here we see now this table that we've just added with all the, the hierarchies. And the interesting thing is now that I can edit things here now. So I could add new columns here, for example, for additional groupings, or I can also edit other details here. So for example, um, if I want to uh, rename this to total new, I could directly rename this here. So you have the option now to um, edit um, all tables without affecting uh, the underlying data model. So you can extend the model and also use it for master data management purposes. So in addition to the automatically created ones that are also linked to the source and can be automatically refreshed, I can also create completely new uh, dimensions. For example, I might not have a dimension that handles scenarios. So I can uh, click here, call this scenario new, um, specify the column name and then just copy and paste, for example, from a spreadsheet, uh, the scenarios that I want to use or just type them in here. And this has created now the new dimension that I can then use um, in, in my model. So now if we go back to Power BI, we have now the new write-back tables available here. And I can now just add the details from the write-back table directly in my data model. So for example, if I want to show now here the, the budget as well, I can now take the, the budget and put it um, in the report. In this case, we have already entered uh, budget data previously. I can do the same thing for the other parts in my existing report. So add here the generic uh, variable from the uh, created um, Ectaris model for the budget. So I see here now the actual budget comparison in the Ectaris variance visual, which allows you to analyze variances. So I can see the uh, absolute variance here. I can switch to the relative variance and I can go back to the uh, combined one. And I can also edit the data here now directly. So now with this Akaris write back table, I can just go into edit mode here and I can see you might have been a little bit too hopeful with our sales budget here. Um, so I see here now the different companies and I can either adjust it on the you know total level or for this particular entity where it looks like we were a little bit too hopeful. And the only thing I have to do is I can just drag and drop here and for example, reduce this to 17 million. So we see now this was adjusted to 17 million and we immediately also see the effect um, you know, on the other reports that are of 
course, using the same data source. Here we can see a Keras matrix, one of the eight custom visuals listed on app source. And matrix allows you to enter data in a pivot table like environment. So here the users can now drill down and drill up um, in the columns uh, selectively, something that you can't do in the normal Power BI matrix. And this is not the only interesting features. What I can do here now as well is I can write back on any level of the model. So I can, for example, see I want to increase the total sales for 2016 by 10%, just put in the uh, 10%. So there's a variety of other options now as well. So this was one option for relative increase, but you have a variety of other options. So here we can see now the new increased value but this was applied to all the underlying accounts to get to this new target. So this is matrix. Then we have the option for visual planning. So as opposed to entering data in the matrix with visual planning, the users can change their numbers by just dragging on a chart. And you can do this on bar charts, on line charts, on area charts. You immediately see the new total and you can also lock targets if you want to um, stick with the 44701, you can lock this in and when you change data, you can see all the others adapt to get to this 44701 target that you've locked in. The other option is then modeling, which is also immediately available. You just take the Actarius visual, in this, in this case it's table edit, and this allows you now to access any of the tables that you've linked with Actarius. And you can then immediately edit your tables here. So your metadata tables like scenarios, products, customers, and so on. And for example, if I want to edit a new scenario that I want to plan with, I can just put this in here and you can say forecast 2022. And this has now immediately added this new scenario to the SQL Server table. And I can immediately then do all the same planning options that you've seen before. So in addition to entering data directly, I can also copy data. The Actaris copy visual allows you with any table linked to Actaris to choose the conditions that you want to use. For example, I want to copy data from a scenario to another scenario, and you can add as many of these conditions as you want. So we can say we want to do this just for a particular financial year. And this will then immediately copy the data for these details into another scenario. And in this case, the new scenario that we've just created here. The final thing is now to make the reporting a little bit more effective. And for this, I want to show you a little bit of the new Actarius reporting visual. So we can now switch the uh, default matrix to the new reporting visual. So this is now the initial layout of Actarius reporting for the three measures. Um, if we want, we immediately have the drill down option here as well. So as a user, I can drill down to the particular level that I want. And I also have now nice features like custom tooltips, where if I move to a particular point, I can see where is this variation coming from. In this case, what are the detail accounts and how is it performed over time? But the most important thing are formatting and custom calculations. And for that, I just go into edit. Here we can see now the structure of our report. And now we want to add new calculations. And this is possible for rows and columns, as well as formatting options. So the first thing is I would like to add a line where I add up the two uh, revenues. So just add a new row, call this total revenue. And total revenue is this plus this. So the next one is I would like to have a gross profit. For that, I'd add another row here, GP, and I take the total revenue minus the cost of goods sold and minus the selling expenses. Then I want to have a row for the total expenses. And that is just all the expense items. So expense, salaries, other employee, other expenses, project, not the other income, travel, sales, manufacturing, administrative, depreciation, and interest. So I've got the new total here now. And then finally, I want to edit the EBIT, the earnings, or profit, and that is just the gross profit minus the total expenses. So we have that one here now. Doesn't look too good in this context. And finally, the 
relative profit, so the EBIT margin, and the EBIT margin is just the EBIT divided by the total revenue. So we have this here now, it doesn't look very nice, but with one click we can change this format. Other things that we can do here now is line formatting. So for example here, um, we're using style one. We can now use these styles and for example, set uh, an overline. And we want to make this white. So now we have this overline here um, with the totals. And we could now also do a variety of other things. For example, we could change this to style two. So we can add now a double underline here. So for EBIT style two, we're going to style two and specify here we want to have a double underline. Now we have the double underline here. Now the report already looks um, a little bit better. So I have now the subtotal calculations here. I can drill down to the detail level. I have the, the tool tips here, but uh, there's more. So we can now also turn on the variance. So it has here automatically provided me with the absolute variance between actual and budget. If I want to, I can change this because this is just a reference to the uh, row numbers. So here we can see value is in column one, target is in column two. If I want to see this in comparison to the prior year, I could just change this to uh, number three and immediately get the numbers for column three, but let's keep it at two. And then if I click here at the top, I can immediately switch to a relative display uh, according to IBC principles um, or the absolute numbers. Then the other thing that we can do here is turning on the comments. So here we have now our report. When we drill down, we can see the comments. We can also edit them directly on the uh, report. And to make this whole thing a little bit nicer, let's make one final adjustment and change the unit to auto. This has then automatically nicely formatted to auto. With the calculation, I need to quickly adjust that as well, that it's also in millions. We do this for the other two calculations as well. So, and there you go. Um, a perfectly formatted financial reports with, with calculations at uh, Excel flexibility, with IBCS visualizations, and with comments stored in the database, not just uh, in a visual, and all this done in a few minutes. Please feel free to try all this out um, on our website, acaris.com, or speak to our customer success team to discuss your particular project requirements. Thank you very much.